Today I'm going to share some charcoal tips working in black and white charcoal on this bunny. For those of you who have been following along with the Red Eye Tree Frogs, I've got a bit of a happy update at the end of today's video. If you are supporters over on Patreon, make sure to head over where you've got the real-time version of this lesson available for you now. If you're unfamiliar with Patreon, for as little as $4 a month, you get access to all of my longer tutorials. You will have instant access to over 200 to watch right now and a new one every week. If you are not sure if Patreon is going to be a fit for you, you can head over and check out my Patreon video library to see what is available there. I have the link in the video description along with the free colored pencil demonstration for you. For this one, I am working on Canson Me Tans. This is the gray toned paper. And when I work in charcoal, I typically use the rough side. When I work in colored pencil, I'll use the smooth side. Now a quick tip, look at the greasy marks on the side of the paper there. You know how that happens? Not using glassine. I should have had glassine under my hand when I drew this out. I must have had hand lotion or something on there and it left those smudge marks that did not come out. So make sure when you're working, whether it be graphite, charcoal, colored pencil, it doesn't matter what, put something under your hand to keep your work clean so you don't have a big smudge you can't get rid of like I do here. So I started by blocking in the eye and that being as dark as it is, it's going to make it easier for me to judge my values moving forward. These pencils that I'm working on work really well for keeping my hands pretty clean. I don't personally like using charcoal blocks. They're fast, but they're also messy. I'm weird about that. So these pencils are great. And I'll have a link to all of the supplies that I like in the video description. This is a very inexpensive medium to get started with. And the great thing here is it's gonna be good, good practice. Even if, if charcoal is not gonna be your primary medium, it's really good practice for your values because you're just focusing on your black and your white. One of the problems that a lot of people run into with colored pencils or painting is trying to figure out what color to use. They feel like the color is what's gonna make a difference in their work being realistic and it's not. It's your values, dark's dark enough, light's light enough. That is what will make a difference in your work. And this is a great medium to practice that. You know, as I want a sharper pencil here, you're not gonna use a pencil sharpener. You can use a sanded block, those little sand blocks you get with some of your pencil kits. Those are great. You just roll the pencil into it to get a sharper point if you need it. So I'm very lightly going over the ears here and then I'm taking a shading stump and just softening that out. I'm using a soft charcoal pencil. That one I like a lot better because I can make the, the values really, really dark. If you go with a harder lead pencil, you, when you buy these, you'll see that they're available in hard, medium, or soft. I like soft, it's gonna go darker. It will smudge more too. If you want something that's going to, to kind of keep its shape a little bit better, maybe get a finer point, then the hard will be good for you. It just doesn't smudge out as nicely. And for me, when I work with charcoal, the fact that it smudges so well is one of my favorite parts. So I typically now, I don't even grab my medium or my hard charcoal pencils. I just stick with the, the soft one. So I'm gonna go over everything here. I just wanna get a soft base layer and then I will smudge all of that out. And then I can use my white charcoal pencil right over it to pull some of the fur marks in. So you get this nice and soft. Now the reason that I use the rougher side of the Canson Me Tans on this is the, it, it has more, more tooth, so there's more for that charcoal to grip to. If your pen, paper is too smooth, it's kind of hard to build up those deeper, darker values because the, there's just not a lot for it to, to grip to. And I have used smoother paper with charcoal. It's not that it can't be done. It's just not as pleasant of an experience trying to get your lights and darks built up the way that you might want to. You, you definitely are limited in how many layers you can get if the paper is too smooth. So again, really focusing on my lights and darks here. Now I want to get the face dark enough so that when I come back with the white pencil, that white will really show up well. Now as we make the fur marks, notice that it, it forms in sort of clumps and clusters. It's not just a bunch of little random confetti lines going every which direction. Pay attention to your reference photo when you draw fur. What direction is that fur going in? How long should each of these pencil, I can't talk, each of these pencil strokes be? You don't need to copy every exact little strand of fur, but you do want to get the general feel of those clumps and clusters and which direction those, that, that fur needs to move in. See how it moves around the nose here, how it's changing direction. 
Now you may be tempted to put the whiskers in really early because that seems to set off the face, make everything look really cute. Don't, the whiskers are gonna go in much later. We need to get all of the, the fur that needs to be behind the whiskers in first. Now the great thing with charcoal, you can go super realistic as much as hyper-realism if you wanted to, or you can keep a more loose, sketchy feel like this and get really fun, quick projects done. So I like to do these charcoal pieces in between when I'm working on my larger, very, very elaborate, time-consuming pieces. It's a nice little fun break to get something done quickly. Probably the fastest medium out there, I would say. Once you get all of that in, you start really focusing on the values. Get those darks a little darker, lights a little lighter. Get some little eyelashes there. Now we can do the whiskers, now that we've gotten the base fur in. Moving on to the body, we're going to do the same thing. Just lightly go over everything here for the dark areas. We'll blend that out with the shading tool. Don't push too hard here though, because if you push too hard, it makes it hard to get that really soft blend. When I push harder, I'm going to keep that for areas that I know don't need to really blend out and I want them to be very, very dark. Don't need a heavy hand with the charcoal. So I'm blending that out with my shading tool. You could use your, if you've got like a Q-tip or a cotton swab, depending on where you're located, what those are called, something like that would work. It doesn't have to be a shading stump. And once I get that blocked in, I can come through with my white pencil and start blocking in the fur. The fur here is a bit thicker, so my pencil strokes are gonna be a bit longer. Same thing though, look at your reference photo, pay attention to which direction that fur needs to move in. We don't want a bunch of random lines everywhere and they need to, to clump, they need to, to overlap. The overlapping part is very important. And the great thing about charcoal, it is very forgiving. If I got a little too crazy, put too much white or got it too dark in any given area, I can come back through with an eraser, lift some of that up and rework the area. Unless you get lotion-y hand marks all over your paper like I did. I can't really fix that unless I went over that with char charcoal as well. I used my hand there just to slightly, slightly uh, soften up the fur there on his chest. If you don't have glassine, use a blank piece of paper. Anything is better than nothing. The only thing is when you're working with charcoal, the charcoal could stick to a blank piece of paper and if it slides around, you could end up with charcoal smudges. But I would rather have charcoal smudges than lotiony hand smudges. Now we're gonna go ahead and sketch in some grass. And I wanna get some variation on the width here. I don't want them all super thin, so I'm going to use my shading tool to sort of connect them together. So I've got some thicker clumps of, of the grass and then I can come back through with my white pencil and get a few highlights. And there we go. This was such a fast project. I think real time was under a half an hour. Very, very quick, fun project. Great for working on your values and your contrast. A few little tiny details there. When you're working with charcoal, don't overblend. That's gonna be one of the things you'll be tempted to do because it does smudge out so nicely. You can get that really soft look, but you don't wanna overdo it. Make sure you're leaving some of those more harsh lines. Usually just a little bit of smudging, a little bit of blending will be enough. And sign it and that is it for this guy. There we go. So this is the Kansami Tens on the toned paper. When I work with charcoal, toned paper is definitely my favorite. I like to use both the black and the white charcoal pencils together, and they just look great on toned paper. I've used just any color you can think of. It comes in multiple tones, anything from blues, weird, ugly oranges. Still not a fan of that orange. Uh, you've got the gray tones. The gray tones are probably my favorites. And again, I'll have links to the supplies that I'm using for this in the video description. As promised, my quick red eye tree frog update. This is Murky. She was one of the girls I got at the beginning of November, I believe, and she had parasites. She's been in quarantine. Actually, all my red eye tree frogs have been in quarantine. So no one's gotten to enjoy this really large, very natural vivarium I set up for them until last night. Yesterday, Murky finally got her clean bill of health from the vet and she 
got to go into the big tank. I'm so excited because she went from a 10 gallon quarantine tank. This is about, about the equivalent of 67 gallons. And there are tons of, of live plants and stuff for her to climb around on and explore. And she really was. This is the night cam, so everything looks a little bit weird. If you turn lights on, she will instantly close her eyes and go to sleep. We call it almond mode because they just fold up and they're just not having any bit of the whole light thing. But she, once she woke up last night, she was all over that tank. She ate, she explored everywhere. She definitely made herself at home. And it was something very encouraging to see because going through treating them for parasites and all the stuff we've been through and getting them to the stage of being healthy. It was so great to see her in her, her permanent home now. She was certainly more active than I have ever seen her, which I mean makes sense. There's more to explore in this tank, but she really took advantage of it. It was so nice to see so many, many months of work. I started this tank Gosh, we started the build on this last summer and then it was ready for frogs by, I want to say, October. So it's been a long, long time coming. And here she is after a busy night of frog activities, all conked out, and she'll stay asleep here. She won't move from that spot until lights are out later on tonight. And then they're usually most active in early morning hours. But as soon as the, the sun comes out or lights come on, they go right back to sleep. And there is her full tank that she's been enjoying. Sleep well, little frog. You've got a busy day tomorrow. Have you subscribed yet? If not, I have a handy button right there. It's round, has an orange arrow going towards it. If you click on that, that'll help you to keep up to date with all of my new art videos every single week. Also make sure to click on the bell notification icon because YouTube is absolutely terrible about notifying people when new videos go up. You can sign up for my email newsletter. I send that out once a week with updates about whatever videos I had go live and some art motivation tips.